wouldn't know my name if I told you. And that's all right. When you're tangled with war, things like this happen. I picked these up in World War I. Excuse me. More and more, the so-called physically handicapped are returning to civilian life. Naturally, I know exactly what it takes. And I know also that they feel that their greatest handicap is you. I've thought a lot of it. Let me show you something. Remember when you lost your baby teeth? Isn't she cute? Of course, her teeth will grow in again. But for a while, she's going to have trouble eating an ear of corn. Grown-ups lose their teeth, too. Or maybe the eyes get a little tired and they have to put on glasses. That's a handicap. So what? Most people don't even notice. But if you're the guy, you have to learn how to use them. You have to adjust to anything like that. It's the adjustment and what it means. That's what I want you to see. If you'd lost a leg or an arm, you were an amputee at one of the government hospitals, you'd know what it means to lose something. You'd stand there a little apart, just looking at nothing. And you'd wonder just how much you'd lost. You can't stop thinking. So you keep looking at nothing, thinking. Men with handicaps do get places. There's a movie star with a hand gone, another with an artificial leg. There was a fighter pilot in England, remember? And one of the world's greatest pilots and aeronautical engineers has two artificial legs. People with physical handicaps run banks, play baseball, get to be state governor, even president of the United States. It's being done every day. The first thing is to overcome your own handicap, to develop some new faculties. They say a man's worth 50 cents an hour from the neck down, but he's worth a lot more than that depending on what he does from the neck up. Here's Jimmy Farrar at the drawing board to prove how true this is. A Jap hand grenade blew up in his hands. Here's Joe Miller, both legs gone above the knees. He'd just as soon go skiing or hike as drive a car. If you were a handicapped veteran taking a training course provided by the government, as these men are, you'd begin to build yourself up physically. You get out in the gym and get going. If you can't stand, you sit down and play volleyball. But you're building a lot more than physical strength. You watch the men ahead of you. Men like Jimmy Morgan finding he can still punch that bag around as he tries out a brand new pair of legs. They're gonna be all right. You think handicapped men can't dive and swim? How many people do you know who can swim a better crawl than that? There's Captain Bray doing the backstroke. No hands. No flags, no bands, no combat stars are given here. But you're watching a battle being fought and won. This is the first time these men have seen themselves with their new legs. They're a little awkward naturally. It takes time and practice, lots of practice. Practice walking up and down slopes. Practice walking over every kind of obstacle until they can go anywhere safely. You'll be thoroughly tested before you leave. Incidentally, you'll find yourself developing a keen sense of danger. You'll learn to sense a hazard or an accident coming a mile away and avoid it. You're acquiring more poise through self-discipline. You're more reliable and much less accident prone than you were before. What? Ride a bicycle? It's a surprise to a lot of men to find they can ride a bike with a handicap. Some of them never rode one. But out here, everybody rides, just as everybody drives a car. Rehabilitation is a big word, but it isn't all work. Regular dances are held. It's all part of your government training program. But it's nice to hear some dance music again. Gradually, 
you find yourself doing all the familiar routine things again. Everyday things like eating. It's a problem at first, but later you don't give it a thought. You learn to handle a knife and fork, and at the same time you may be taking up an old profession. Photography, for instance. Just working around the lab may start a new career or strengthen an old one. You've already been told that everybody drives out here. But a command car, that's about like driving a truck. That's tough. Or is it? Well, it's not so bad at that. Everybody does it. Just another part of the training. And the command car, like the car you'll drive, isn't different or specially equipped in any way. It couldn't be and still let you get your driving certificate. And every veteran gets one before he leaves. Standard cars, no gadgets. And here's the reward. He's getting his driving certificate. Quite a crowd gathers to watch the big moment. Every one of those men on horseback is handicapped. But that's no reason why they shouldn't ride a horse. This kind of recreation shortens the time to the day when they've passed all their tests and are ready to go back to civilian life, back to a job. When the great day comes, make no mistake about it, these men have won a great personal battle. They've had to prove that it was won. And next, they'll have to overcome their second handicap, the people who think a handicapped man is a liability in business or industry. When this man applies for work, he's no longer handicapped in the conventional sense. He has mastered his handicap, been thoroughly trained, and he's able to do his old job or something better. In many ways, he's a more purposeful, a better man than he was before. No help wanted. No special training or special consideration of any kind. He does not want your sympathy. He simply wants a chance to prove that he, like the others, can roll up a record of steady production, safety, and all-around success in the right job. Let's look around and see some of these men actually at work in industry. There are all kinds of jobs, all kinds of men. Veterans may apply to a special service and employment office at any one of the 13,000 community posts of the American Legion and the veteran's employment representative in every local public employment office. Proper placement is important because in the right job, handicapped men earn more money, have fewer accidents, and maintain a better performance record than the normal worker. What counts is what always counts, the man himself. A man is a man, skilled or unskilled, and it makes no difference whether he wears glasses or an artificial leg or has some other impairment, the record of performance speaks for itself. Leading insurance companies know he's a good risk and recommend him. His employers, foremen and fellow workers in business and industry are enthusiastic. One thing more, and you need only your heart to help you understand. There's a reason why the physically handicapped ask no favors, but try a little harder, have a little more to give. It's what they fought for in two world wars, and it's what we work for now. <laughs>